Jim Dixon, the branch manager of the Connor Homes Corporation here in Goldsboro, is a native of Oklahoma. Twenty-eight years ago today, Jim was serving with the United States Marine Corps. And uh, Jim, where were you on December 7, 1941? Bob, on December 7, 1941, I was serving as a member of the Marine Detachment on a battleship West Virginia at Pearl Harbor. What was the first inkling that something was different here on this Sunday morning to you? The first thing that uh, brought my personal attention to this fact was a burning seaplane hangar on Ford Island. Well, we saw some planes uh, a few minutes later diving toward the hangar and dropping, which we learned, of course, were bombs. Our vision from this point was not very good, and we couldn't uh, actually see these bombs exploding. Just a few more minutes after this uh, first knowledge that something was going on over there, the first sergeant of the Marine Detachment who had been serving in China and was probably one of the few men in the entire area that could identify a Japanese aircraft came up on deck and informed us that those were Japanese planes and to take our battle stations. This in despite the fact that our officer of the deck who was on duty had not at that time, in fact, never did have general quarters sounded. What was your battle station, Jim? Our basic battle station, or number one battle station, was on one of the old 5-inch 51 broadsides on the port side of the ship. We didn't shoot at anything with these guns because uh, we were not able to get ammunition up from below decks in time to load the gun before the first torpedo planes came down the channel and struck us. This was a wave of torpedo planes, about nine in number. We assume that uh, they pretty well spread out. We only saw three of those strike us, although we actually suffered nine torpedo hits in all. After we recovered from this initial shock, we moved up onto the secondary gun position up on the boat deck on 5-inch uh, 25 anti-aircraft guns. And we found one magazine that was capable of holding 30 rounds of ammunition with 27 rounds of ammunition, and that was target ammunition up there. And that is all the ammunition that we had to use. We fired all 27 rounds at them, Bob, and we were lucky in that we struck what it was apparently the torpedo, one of the planes coming in because uh, on the impact it exploded into very small pieces. Mentioning the fact that all of this started in the morning, Jim, uh, the three waves of torpedo planes and all of this uh, action against the enemy planes lasted about how long? It seemed to me like it was about two hours. Jim, being in Battleship Row, you on the West Virginia, and of course we all remember the scenes of the Arizona as it was hit and exploded, and of course it is still the National Memorial there in Pearl Harbor now. How far was your ship from the Arizona? We were tied up immediately in front of the Arizona. At what point in the Battle of Pearl Harbor did the Arizona explode, as we remember that picture very vividly, since it's replayed just about every Pearl Harbor anniversary? Bob, the initial attack was pretty well over with uh, when this massive explosion took place. Actually, the Arizona up to that time had hardly been hit as compared to some of the other ships in Battleship Row. However, one of the dive bombers uh, got lucky and apparently one of the bombs went right down the stack and penetrated down into the main battery magazines. When this occurred, of course, it created a, an explosion and fire in that area. And when this fire reached these magazines, there was a tremendous explosion. As a matter of fact, it was the most terrific explosion that I observed during the entire war, World War II, and actually felt the force of the explosion before I heard it and turned around to see what was going on. And when I did, I saw this big cloud of smoke, fire, chunks of steel, and about everything else you can think of going higher and higher into the air. Apparently the explosion was, had blown cans of powder used in the main battery guns there, the 14-inch guns that they had up into the air, and these things were exploding as they went up. And I stood there open mouth, I'm sure, for several minutes watching this terrific explosion until I realized that things were beginning to come down out of this cloud and dived under a turret there for my own protection. And I saw chunks of steel coming from that ship that had been blown high into the air that were bigger than the average automobile. And there was such a terrific explosion there that the it looked like in observation at that time that the entire 
fore part of the ship collapsed and fell forward. What did you do all the rest of the day? After our ship was sunk and we stopped being hit by the torpedo planes, we were hit by a few dive bombers a little later, uh, we realized there were quite a number of men down below decks that needed help, and we took flashlights and went down below decks, and we helped as many of these people out of there as we possibly could reach. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any idea how many you helped out? I'd say probably close to 200 people. It was a weird world down in water below decks in a big battleship, wasn't it? Uh, yes, it was. Of course, this water was so far up in the ship that we weren't really able to go to the lower decks. We were only going, able to go down to about the second deck. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we had some people that lived down as far as uh, five and six decks below the waterline. How many total casualties with the West Virginia on Pearl Harbor Day? So I think there was better than uh, 1,600 people all told. Battleship Oklahoma had rolled over on her side there, and the men inside had no opportunity to escape, and we were in fear that this might possibly happen to us, too, because we had listed to port so heavily. And consequently, we were taking out the men who were in a dazed or wounded condition, some suffering from concussion, and we were passing up the people that were dead. We did, however, take out one person that was dead because uh, we had so much respect for this man. He was a chief gunner's mate there, and everybody aboard ship knew him quite well and thought a great deal of him. So we carried this chief up on deck so that at least he could have a decent burial. and. I might say we just forgot about him, went ahead about it, the other things we were doing. Fortunately, about, uh, and surprisingly too, about a year or a year and a half later, uh, this man walked up to me and spoke to me, and he was quite alive. And it was quite a surprise and a shock, and one I was quite grateful for. Jim, I'm sure all of us old enough to remember that day have probably a good recollection of where we were when we first heard the report that uh, Pearl Harbor was being bombed, and of course you were there at that point in history. What do you think is probably its most important element in history as it developed? Bob, in my way of thinking, the most important element that occurred as a result of the attack on Pearl Harbor was the unification of the people of our country after this attack. I think it did more than any one single event in history to unify the people of the United States. You've been listening to One Man Who Was There. Jim Dixon, branch manager of the Goldsboro Connor Mobile Home Sales Corporation. We wish at this time to express gratitude to Jim Dixon for sharing some of his memories of this day with us. This program has been presented as a public service by Radio Center, a recollection of December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. This is Bob Hill reporting.